corporate versus independent estate agents. Talk to me. Well, I think the corporates have been hit really hard in the last five, six years. I say hit really hard, it sounds like it's not their fault. It's all self-perpetuating. The, the bottom line is, is they've, they've presented the uh, employee with a lot of challenges, a lot of things like you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you've got to, there's no real identity in the corporate world anymore. In other words, you are a number. And some are starting to play a different game. You know, I'm seeing a lot more um, people online, on LinkedIn, for example, who are sharing new stories about how to help people, teams, blah, 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 blah. And they're creating a different pattern. And I, I know I, I fully respect that. But I know, I don't know of many organizations in our country that are of a corporate nature in a state agency that are really putting the agent first. Would what would you do if you were Alison Platt from Countrywide? Um, I mean, she's clearly got a strategy, which, look, you know, it's very easy to say, and I've spoke to some very senior people who were at the, the helm when it was at the heights, and I'm talking heavy heights, you know, you're talking a billion uh, business, billion pound business. Um, it's suffering a lot. I mean, I th and now my Gigs & Co single office downstairs made more net profit than they did. I think it was last year, or, or, or something ridiculous like that. There must be a strategy behind this, because it is seriously, they, I, I, I feel that there's a place in the market for the corporate. I think they're finding it to be closer to the online model these days. Interesting you say, what do you think about the corporates offering an online package under the same brand I think I think it's a really interesting move personally I think you need to have your belief in what you do and that's your kind of badge of honor you've got to because you're sending mixed messages out to the public through your team and let's be honest I hear that it's all about getting more leads because it'll present more opportunities and then they can upsell the, the normal service uh, from what I can see and this isn't be everywhere that isn't working I mean, if you're going to get like 100 listings in a particular area in a year and you're getting them at full fat fee, but now you're going to get 40 at skimmed prices and you... you, you I would I, be worried if I, I mean, was worried. You're offering more choice, don't get me wrong. It's yeah. great for the, for the punters. I think you'll find there'll be more self-employed agents across the country. There'll be more market centres. There'll be more people offering opportunities, which is what I'm looking into at the moment, for agents that are really, really good have got high integrity, good values, they're not being looked after, not being driven, not being trained, not being developed. Mm -hmm. And you can get them to probably come out of this world and actually get into one where they're enjoying it again. Because it's interesting is, is that uh, a, a very good friend of both of us is Ian White, and he actually said that Purple Bricks have also changed the market for estate agents yeah. in the fact is that you're not chained to a desk between nine o'clock and six o'clock and you can work your own hours well, you, as you see fit. We were talking earlier about the, the kind of 20 to 30 year olds, and let's be honest, and there's a lot of guys 30 to 40, 40 to 50, that don't want to get in at eight o'clock, half eight no. in the morning, and leave at eight o'clock at night. It, it isn't actually required. It's working smarter, Massively. not harder. I've um, got guys who work part time, I've got people that turn up at half nine. The bottom line is I've got people that deliver what we believe in to our clients. Something that I'd love you to check out, I know we haven't spoken about it, it's a chap called Chris Rosendale, down, who used I've to seen be... He's starting his... Corp, uh, he's, he's sharing um, uh, the, the same theory, yeah, it's it? a kind of halfway between a franchise and a licence. I tell you what, it is a fantastic model. Mm. It is a fantastic model. It's kind of like a halfway house, and I think Absolutely. people should check it out. Well, I think, I think this, is where, this is where the market's going. What, more towards the American self-employed route? Why not? If the agent's picking up a majority of the fee and there's an umbrella organisation who can absolutely sustain the costs that... If you were to go and open your own business today and you're one of these agents who's a really good regional director, area manager or branch manager, you're going to go and open on your own, you're faced with 60 to 100 grand's worth of costs. And the rest. If you go and work under an umbrella and you're self-employed, you're getting your balance, you're getting your freedom and you're also getting to operate with your beliefs. Best of both worlds. I that could so. be the way forward, mate. Just a little tip. 
that's probably where it's going. And I feel it is, and we're changing things, and we're, we're going to be opening very sh shortly in the central area of the country uh, and beginning of next year with 25, 30 agents going self-employed. Personal agents or whatever you call them. Personal, uh, do you know what? The beautiful thing as well, guys that are hitting some real rocks and pressures from their costs uh, can come under the same banner. As long as their branding is the same, we just power them up. So in other words, they're going to have all the systems, they don't have to spend all the money, mm. and they can go out and do what they love. You hear it here first. Mm. That's Good, it. lovely.